Hello, everybody, and welcome into another exclusive interview presented by Garnet Trust. I am Kendall Smith, joined alongside of Marcellus Dial. I'm sure <laughs> all of you know who he is. He's a quarterback at the University of South Carolina, heading into his redshirt junior season this year, and he's from Woodruff, South Carolina. Marcellus, it's great to have you here for this interview. How have you been doing? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, I've been doing good, really good. I know that life has been busy for you recently, spring mm -hmm. practice starting up just a couple of weeks ago. So how have things been going with spring practice so far? Oh, spring practice been going smooth. I mean, for the cornerback or the secondary group, we've been, we've been doing really good, having, having good practices back-to-back -back stacking days. So it's been going smoother, a lot smoother than last year. A lot That's smoother than last year. Like, you know, I, I will say that when I was in high school and we had our powder puff games, I played cornerback. So I, <laughs> when you talk about the secondary, when you talk about cornerbacks, it brings back memories of my high school yeah. football players yeah. yelling at me for not being able to keep them on an island, they would say, and stay on them and, and keep the coverage. <laughs> it's so funny because every yeah. time I talk to somebody who's a cornerback, I always laugh because it just brings me back to those memories in high yeah. school. In this past year, at quarterback, you had a phenomenal year. You made seven starts for South Carolina. It was mm -hmm. actually your first year at USC because prior to that, you were playing at Georgia Military College. And mm -hmm. we just talked about this off camera. I want you to tell everybody what <laughs> you went through as a football player at Georgia Military mm -hmm. College. So whenever I first got to Georgia Military in 2019, we was on um, all the freshmen. We had to move into the barracks. That's like, like the dorms on campus, what they call the barracks. So, and um, all the football players lived in the top of like the students that went there that was actually like doing things with the military. But they was doing like PT, waking up like 5:30 in the morning, and like just doing all kind of military stuff. So. We had to, uh, we was required to wear uniforms to school every, to all of our classes. And outside of class, we had to wear a, um, the same kind of um, t-shirt and shorts anywhere on campus, we had to wear that. And then plus on top of that, in the mornings, we had to wake up at like 7.30 and stand in formation to listen to, listen to announce, announcements for like 30 minutes. Then on top of that, we had to, March to breakfast, March from breakfast, do the same thing with lunch and dinner. It was it was insane. We had to keep our hair a certain length. We had to, it was, it was insane. It was really insane. So two follow-up questions with that. Number one, when you woke up in the morning, did they have that like trumpet playing the the song? <laughs> Oh yeah, like they they had they had a it, it was annoying. It was a big it was a loud wake up call. Like like I said before, um the people that went to the people that was going there for the military stuff, so their wake up call was like, like at five thirty. And football players they have to wake up till like six thirty. So we would get woken up by their wake up call because it's like a loud horn that goes over the whole bed. So we would get waking up by they it was it was it was horrible. It was rough. <laughs> what do you think was harder, PT at Georgia Military College or a Luke Day workout at South Carolina? Oh, mm, it <laughs> depends. We had some, we had some really mean sergeants. So our sergeants, they was, yeah, it depends. But no, I'm just kidding. Luke Day's workouts are, they, they kill her. They, they gonna get you right. I, I, I mm, he got, he got some tricks up his sleeve. Just based on the videos that I see on Twitter between, you know, Gamecock football and what Coach Beamer is posting about yeah. the workouts that you all are doing, I'm like, I, I couldn't yeah, even yeah. imagine. Yeah, they definitely different. They definitely different. Well, it's obviously working because things went really well last year for South Carolina on the football mm -hmm. field. We know how the season turned out, ended up being a winning season, winning the Duke's Mayo Bowl. So when you look back to last year, Marcellus, is there a particular memory that comes to mind as being a favorite memory from the 2021 season? Uh, like individually or as like a team? You can do both. Well, individually, I would say on um, Florida game, like <laughs> the night was, it, it was just, that, that night was fun. That night was really fun. But individually, the first drive, like, I came out there. I was. I didn't even know I was starting before the game, but then coach had told me I'm starting. I come out there like I, I but I was ready. I was prepared. I, I've been doing good 
every day in practice up until then. So I come out there the first drive, they they all right out of the bat, they come, they start coming at me. They came at me like twice, threw it, threw it at me twice, he caught both of them. Then the it was second down, it was second down, and they threw another, they threw the same exact route at me and I broke it up. Then on fourth down, it, no, it was third down. And on <laughs> it was third down and then they ran like a little screenplay for me. They ran a screenplay to me. I made a tackle in the backfield for fourth down and got us off the field. Was, that was one of the best moments I had last year. I, and then at the yeah, then at the team I was saying Deuce Mayo win. That was that was different. That was fun. I remember that game vividly. I was covering mm-hmm. it for Gamecock Central. I the drive that you're describing, I remember it so <laughs> yeah. and just the whole crowd was going insane. Yeah. That oh. was that was a Good night. Oh, it definitely was. That night, the Auburn night, some really great memories oh, yeah. from last year. And like we said earlier, it was your first year at South Carolina coming from transferring from Georgia Military College. So what would you say was the biggest adjustment for you going from Georgia Military College to an SEC school in South Carolina? I would say it has to be, it would have to be the the time management, like the time I had, the like in at JUCO, I had time at the football to like just do my own thing and just chill. I, I didn't really have that many responsibilities, but like here, it's like like we 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 have something to do like every 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 moment of our day. Like we have something to do, whether it's like going to practice, going to workouts, or going to study hall, or doing schoolwork, or going to class. Like we we constantly have something to do, something on our schedule. So. I really haven't had that much free time, so I would say that time is the biggest difference. I can attest to that because we are quite literally recording this interview on a Friday night, and I feel like yeah. most people on a Friday night would be out doing it. We are yeah. recording this interview on a Friday night. You yeah. don't get a lot of free time, like you said, but when you do get free time, who on the team do you hang out with the most, and then what do you like to do in your free time? Uh, I would say Joey Hunter. Is the person I hang out in the most. And usually, we just chilling in our room playing Fortnite or just chilling, listening to music, or like literally just playing a game or just playing 2K or something. We just always, we never really go out like that. We just hang out, hang out, like to hang out in the crib because we be so tired from what the week had, the week ahead of us. Like, don't even have energy to go out, so we just be chilling here. It's interesting you bring up NBA 2K because I just did an interview with TJ Sanders and he told me that he's the <laughs> best 2K player on the team. Ooh, no, nah, I ain't gonna count. I ain't gonna count. T- I, I, I ain't never played him, but I, I've heard about him. But like, I ain't gonna say, I, he, he, he might be the best. I, I ain't gonna say I'm bad, but I, I'm sure not the worst. Like, But yeah, he, he might be the best. I don't know. I gotta play him, but I know I'm pretty good. Listen, I don't know the difference between the X and the Y on the controller. <laughs> I've seen it a few times. So yeah. it's impressive to me that anybody can do that anyways. And I know that it's something a lot of players have said that they really enjoy doing as well. Marcellus, I know that a lot of people have reasons why they do what they do. They have reasons why they love what they do. So mm. what is your motivation for playing this sport of football why do you love it and kind of what is your why for doing what you do and playing football mm, it would definitely be my family like just the uh, all, all the things we've been through and all like just, just the the positive vibe i bring to them by like what i do on the field just my my how, how it affects me and just how this game has shaped me into a person so i, I would say like this game has made me better for my family, but this, it, I do this definitely because of my family. That's awesome. And you are from yeah. the state of South Carolina. So mm-hmm. a lot of your family members live very close. Were they able to come out to some games this past year and watch? Oh yeah. Them? Yeah. My family, they, they was always like asking me for tickets and just telling me whenever they was coming in and whenever they couldn't make it. But a lot of my, I, I had family members at every one of my games. It was, it was, it, it's, it's, that's why that's the main reason why I chose South Carolina because I knew like I wasn't that far away and I, I would have be able to have family here whenever I needed them and stuff. So I'm good. 
So your first year at South Carolina was also Clayton White's first year as the defensive coordinator. It was Shane Beamer's first year as head coach. So kind of going through that experience with them, having coaches where it was their first year here as well. What was that like? And then what is it like playing for a defense that is run by Clayton White? Um, Coming in here, it was like they – they kind of took me in. Like, I was committed on a much champ. So, like, I, I, whenever he had lost his job, like, I was I was getting offers from other schools and just other coaches trying to talk to me and just make me flip. But, like, then Coach Beamer, he, he stepped in and, like, really just won me over by what he was, like, what we're doing here. Like, he won me over by his plan and just, like, what he had, what he had in store for me personally, and what he had in store for this university, and then I was just all into the account with, um, I'm not that far from home, and just all stuck together. And then playing for Coach White, I mean, he got a, he 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 one of the smartest coaches I ever played for. He got a great scheme, his, and he know what he's doing. Like he gonna put us in position to make plays, for, and it's just our job to make them. Like he he, he definitely one of the best in the game. I remember last year when it was the start of the season in August, we would be at press conferences and some of the reporters would ask players, who are some of the new guys that have really stood out to you? And the two names that everybody kept saying were Juju McDowell and Marcellus Style. You were always one of those names that came up. So when you came to South Carolina, did you know that you were going to make such a big impact so early in your time here? Uh, I mean... I didn't, but also I had that kind of like, not cockiness, but confidence in myself, knowing that I could, um, I, I, I was, I was, I'm, I'm meant to be here. Like I fit in too. Like, so I, I just came in here with that chip on my shoulder, having to prove myself, you know, coming to a new school. So I, I knew, I knew I could, I knew it was possible to do it. So I just kept faith in myself and just, just, just came out here and just did it, you know. You definitely did it for sure. A great first season. Lots to look yeah. forward to in this upcoming season as well. Marcellus, I have some fun questions for you because I like for the people watching <laughs> to get to know your personality yeah. a little better. So are you down to answer some maybe non-football related fun questions? Definitely. Okay, perfect. Question number one is, do you have a secret talent? Oh, a secret talent. I know how to draw. I know how to draw really good. Really, really? Yeah. Do you do it a lot, like, when you get free time? Oh, I actually, uh, the last time I, well, I, I tried to, but, like, like I said, since, I, since I've been here, like, I haven't really had that much free time. Like, every, even on my free time, I'd be, like, ready to go to sleep. <laughs> I never have, like, energy to draw. But, like, I really, whenever I put my time into it and whenever I, like, focus and sit down and, like, something on my mind that I want to draw, like, I'm, I'm very good and like drawing it up. Do you draw like people or do you draw places? What would be like your specialty? Like the thing that you're best at drawing? I like I like drawing drawing everything really like anime characters. I like drawing I I do like drawing people. I like drawing football players actually. I like drawing it all like any anything. I really that's that's what that's why I love it so much because I can like draw anything like whenever I just focus I can draw anything that's impressive I'm very mm -hmm. impressed by that I cannot draw I do this thing <laughs> so yeah. anyone who has an artistic talent like that that's awesome very impressive mm -hmm. question number two I've asked this to actually a lot of incoming freshman players and like Braden Davis and some of the new enrollees it's about weird food combinations so do you have any like food combinations of two foods that probably shouldn't go together, but you love them together? It's a tough question. Yeah, it is a tough question, because I wouldn't call it weird. I mean, it, it's not weird. It's like snacks, but it's like hot pockets. and No, not hot pockets, but pizza rolls and goldfish. I mean, I don't think that is okay. weird, but <laughs> yeah, pizza rolls and goldfish. I, I usually eat that. that. Yeah. I can see that. No, some of them were like very bizarre. Like Braden's was quesadilla. Yeah, I know. I bet you, yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> we, <laughs> we heard yeah. verdict from Marcellus himself. That's what I said. I was like, that, that can't be a thing. Yeah, you can't. No, I, I cannot. Catch up. That. 
Are you an early bird or a night owl? I think I'm kind of both. Like, I can stay up late at night and wake up early in the morning and be, like, completely fine. So, I think I'm kind of both. I think I'm definitely both. Do the TikToks get you at night? Like, do you get scrolling on TikTok? And, definitely, that, that, yes, yes, that's, that's a, my biggest problem. Like, at one point, I had I had to delete TikTok because it was just so, like, draining. Like, you can literally be on your phone for an hour and you think you... You can be on there for an hour. You take you on there for like only twenty minutes. Like, it's crazy how how addictive TikTok is. Like, yes, crazy. No, I'm the same way. I need to actually have some self control, like you, and <laughs> yeah, because I won't delete it. I think it's so funny, and I'll just like go down a rabbit mm-hmm. hole, scrolling for hours and hours. And before I know it, it's like two o'clock in the morning. I have to wake yeah. up at seven, going on five hours of sleep. <laughs> at least I don't have to go to football hey. practice. At least I don't have a loop. yeah. Yeah. Fast. That's why. That's why I had to. I had to watch myself because it was turning into a habit. Like I just don't even mean to. I just pick up my phone and just scroll. I'm like, just keep on scrolling. I'm like, dang. Before it, you know, it's three o'clock. It, <laughs> quite literally, I totally understand what you're saying, Marcellus. The spring game is scheduled for April 16th. So my yeah. last question for you: Your message to Gamecock fans ahead of the season, ahead of the spring game. Why should they be excited, and why should they come out and watch you guys? Oh, y'all definitely should be excited. We got a lot in store. Like, 2022 Carolina football game, cops. we 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 gonna, we going to make some noise, a lot of noise, actually. Like, y'all, y'all don't want to miss a show on April 16th. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of energy in the building. We definitely excited for it. We can't, we can't wait for it. You don't want to miss it. You definitely don't want to miss it. You don't miss a show if you do. It's a night kickoff. It's going to be a ton of fun mm-hmm. just a couple of weeks away. Marcellus, yeah. thank you so much for joining us on this exclusive interview presented by Garnet Trust. Just really quickly before we get out of here, what do you think an organization like Garnet Trust can do in terms of NIL deals for student athletes in South Carolina? Oh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And um, oh, Garnet Trust, Garnet Trust can open up a lot of doors. It, it, it really can. Like, it's something that. We, us at Carolina, are, like, definitely taking advantage of. It's, like, it's really opening up a lot of doors for us and just helping us out. There's so many ways that, like, most schools don't have this kind of privilege or have these these kind of organizations. So it's definitely something that's, like, like everyone should take advantage of here. Yeah. You heard it from Marcellus himself. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for joining us on this interview. It was so much fun. I had a great time, and I know that the fans – are going to love hearing from you, and hopefully we get to talk to you soon. All right, thank you. Have a nice day. You too.